So I just want to do a quick video about uh, sugar stereochemistry, but to do that I want to review chirality first just to make sure everybody's on the same page with that. Otherwise the rest of it will be a little bit hard to follow. So uh, if you remember chirality from organic chemistry or whenever you were first introduced to it, um, it's the concept of handedness. And the definition of it is basically that um, the, a molecule that is chiral lacks any planes of symmetry. So the mirror image is non-superimposable. Um, amino acids are a really good example that everybody likes to use of chiral molecules. So let's just draw one real quick. We're going to draw alanine so that's pointing backwards at CH3 that NH2 is pointing forwards H is pointing backwards and the carboxyl is pointing forwards so this is chiral right here um, you can rotate that just so it looks like this you have one in the plane of the page another in the plane of the page and then you can have one going backwards into the page and then one coming forwards out of the page right so this is just a, a tetrahedron right all right um, but the way you if you guys remember the way you determine if it's R or S is you go by numbering system where atomic number atomic number not molecular weight atomic number because you can have um, isomers of, or isotopes of course that uh, and that would confuse things it's atomic number the lowest atomic number goes in the back so we're gonna take what we had up here with our just our plain H we're going to put that in the back. So, let me just try and show this. I'm not going to draw the H at all. Alright, so the H is hidden behind that ball. And then, you can go from the first one, this is obviously the highest atomic number, that's 14, and we've got two 12s. So that then we go to the next atom in there, so the next atom is an O, so we have two and then three, right? So you go around, and that makes it R. Does that make sense? We just kind of took this and shifted it to the side and put the H in the back. Now, if I had drawn it like this, where instead I have the CH3 group on the top, and I know this is boring if you're just watching this for the um, sugar stereochemistry, but just bear with me. So anyway, all I did was swap these two groups. So if you swap two groups, you reverse the uh, stereochemistry of it, and then you have the enantiomer, which is um, the S, of course. So take our CH3 and our COOH and our NH2. And then our H is covered up, because remember that's going back like that, like just straight back almost. So again, here's one, but in this case, this is two, and that's three. So if the order goes like that, then we have S. So, and R, in case you're wondering, is for rectus, which is right, and then S is for sinister, which is left. Anyway, you don't need to know that, but... um. 
So that's pretty straightforward. But the thing with sugars is it's completely different. You have this D or L system. And it's based off of glyceraldehyde. Okay. Um, but why is it based off of glyceraldehyde? Well, it's because sugars have many, many uh, chiral centers. So it, it can get very complicated. If you don't have a, an easy system to distinguish one from the other, well, it, it's hard anyway because you have tons of isomers. But um, And actually, they're called epimers. But uh, there's a basic way to do it, which is based off of glyceraldehyde. So... Um, you always have a carbonyl, and then you have your chain. Oh, let me move this. You have your carbonyl. In this case, it's an aldehyde, because it's glyceraldehyde. And then you have your chain, which is the last substituent carbon on your chain. Or second to last, rather. So we look at this one in glyceraldehyde, okay? Um, if you rotate this back in your head, you can see this is L. And if we were to do the same thing, except just switch two groups, we're just going to switch the H and the OH. Because when you draw sugars typically in the um, in the planar position, not in the cyclic position, you're gonna see this is just the easiest way to do it. Uh, the only thing you're gonna be swapping is where the H and the OH is. So in this case, it goes around like that, and then you have the D. So you might just say, well, then L equals S and D equals R. Well, sort of, except it's a little bit more complicated. So with glucose, let's check this out. Here's glucose. Mm. Better draw this smaller. So here's your first one. There's your first chiral center. Here's your second chiral center. So I'm going to go down. That one's R. How do you have these written out? That one's S. Our next chiral center. Here's R. And our final chiral center here is another R. And glucose has one more carbon down here. When the ring forms, though, this this last part gets that's not part of the ring, so we don't need to worry about it. Plus, it's not chiral. Um, so again, here's our aldehyde. But this is the confusing part for people. This is not the one that you're paying attention to. All right, this is not the chiral center that you're paying attention to. You're paying attention to this last one right here, this last chiral center farthest from the aldehyde. So this is R, and that makes it D-glucose. All right. Um, if you guys are curious about the name of, of glucose, actually, it's 2R3S. See, so we're just going down here. 2R, 3S. Because there's one. It's one. 
two, three, four, five. So 2r, 3s, 4r, 5r, this is D-glucose, 2, 3, 4, lots of hydroxyl groups, 6, dash, penta, hydroxy, uh, hexanol, al, hexanol. Because remember, it's an aldehyde, right? That's an aldehyde up there. Um. Okay, so uh, you might even be able to further simplify and say, well, here's our last position, and if you have an H and your OH points to the left or uh, probably be more like that your OH points to the left you have L and then if you have that same kind of thing oh, I'm sorry and your OH is on the right And now you have D, right? Okay. Um, I just want to break it here, and then we'll come back and do the other half.